Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling in Dash for today, the 28th of February, the year is 2022. I'm David, this is Yavella. We also have two furry traveling companions, Ollie and Hannah, our golden retrievers. Now today we're going to be looking at Numbers chapters 24, 25, 26, and 27, and also what's called Love Chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm calling this one love, not just for married people. <laughs> and I'll explain that in a little bit, but dear, would you open us up in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to share what we've read to those who are listening. We ask that you help us to take your words and to apply them to our lives. Amen. So what was yours called again? It's called Love Not Just for Married People. But before I get into that, after having a lengthy meeting with my uh, audio editor, Kelvin, talking about what the purpose of the channel is, I just want to state that the purpose is that people, you know, what are people getting out of watching the YouTube? What are they getting out of listening to the podcast? Well, hopefully encouragement so that they too can have a personal relationship with Jesus, that they too can understand a little bit more. We've been doing life journaling, which is just reading the same scripture that other people around the globe are reading on the same day. Um, we read through the Bible, the Old Testament once a year, and we read through the New Testament twice. And so that's what it is. It's not a strange secret thing. It's called life journaling. We call it in dash. Dash is the space between the time you're born and the time you die that's on your gravestone. And so there's nothing secretive about it, but we want you to know that this is what you get out of it. Why do you tune in? So that you can too can have a little bit more information and encouragement in your own walk with God. Now, I'm writing about love, not just for married people today. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. My observation is that Paul wrote to the Corinthian people there to get them to change their behavior. It was not to crush them, but his wording was to help them change their ways. Chapter 13 deals with the motive of their actions and all that we do. If we do not do things with love, it equals meaningless. It's for naught. My application. Now, I have read these two lines of scriptures many times. I have said them while conducting weddings. Um, I've gone over them many times. But today when I read them, I thought, you know, these are really good words for everyone and worth reviewing. Not just for how I treat my spouse, and I have the best one, sorry guys. Uh, I'll say that now on camera. Um, but I should remember that these words are goods for friends, families, and strangers I just meet. And strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. Going back to the original purpose of why Paul wrote them, it was to straighten out the standard of integrity and morality for all the followers of Jesus. So it's good for all of us. We're reminded here, single or married, that love is more than a feeling. It is a way of relating to others. My prayer, Lord, thanks for meeting with me daily and for helping me grow in your ways. Help me to not just keep lists of people who have wronged me, not to do that. I don't have to do business with them, but help me to forgive them in my heart and not carry around those long lists about how they wronged me. Amen, Pastor David. Very good. It took me a long time to come up with that, with the right wording of what I wanted, but it just made sense. It's Paul's writing to the Corinthians to help them know that love is not just a feeling, oh, I love you, but it's the way we um, treat others. Don't Which have to be married. Is uh, when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, mm -hmm. he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second one 
that follows that is to love your neighbors. Who's my neighbors? Everybody. Um, my title is from one of my, another one of my mentors, K. Arthur, uh, and I called mine Fingers of Love, and I'll explain what that is as I go on. But mine is from Numbers 24, 10 through 13. Then Balak's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but you blessed them these three times. Now leave at once and go home. I said I would reward you handsomely, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. Rewarded. Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell your messengers? Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord. And I must say only what the Lord says. My observation. Balak was a king of Moab, and the reputation of the Israelites preceded them. Balak and his people were well aware of the miracles that had accompanied Israel's exodus from Egypt. Balak, the king of Moab, had witnessed the Israelites' destruction of the Amorites, and he was terrified. Balak sought out a prophet named Balaam to put a curse on God's people. However, Balaam went to God and asked him for guidance before he would agree to Balak's plan. So Balak's plan did not work. Balaam ended up blessing the Israelites and cursing the enemies of them. My application. Am I willing to say like Balaam, even if I could have all the silver and gold I wanted, I would not do anything on my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord, and I must say and do only what the Lord says. Now, to make it more personal, personal, Am I willing to say it is okay if I do not have or I do not receive the desires of my heart? These things are not bad. They're not ungodly things, but things that I w would mean a lot to me if God granted these prayers. These things are personal to me and, selfishly speaking, they're for me. Am I okay with God saying, am I okay with saying, God, if you choose not to give me these things, it is okay with me. My prayer. Lord, Balaam took a chance of speaking against the desire of King Balak. He was okay without the riches. Thank you for reminding me that unanswered desires are okay because you are sifting your answers through your fingers of love and I'm okay with your decisions. Your answers of no or yes or wait are given in love thank you amen not in the future but have there been things in the past that you really wanted that you didn't get i feel like this is christmas and oh i didn't get that game or i didn't get that thing well right now well i i know the future you would like to have the nice home in Hawaii the reason why I want the nice home in Hawaii is because I would love for the dogs to go with us but when we go our place our HOA doesn't allow the dogs. don't allow the dogs. so asking for a home where we could take the dogs really means a lot to me but if God says no I have other plans then am I okay with that Yes, I'll probably cry because I can't take the dogs with me, but he has a reason. Yeah, it's not always easy when that happens or even in my case, trying to be physically fit along with spiritually and mentally fit. Dying to self is difficult. So it, it really is. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at Numbers chapters 28 and 29 and also Mark chapter 8. I'll close this out in prayer. Right. Father God, help us with those desires that we want. Help us to understand what our needs are versus our wants. And just thank you for meeting with us daily. We ask that you continue to guide us and protect us along the way as we still have work to do here on earth for you. 
We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.